Hey guys, welcome back to another week on the bench, second week in April, and the long uh, isolation, so or so to speak, that we're all now having to learn to live with. Um, I hope all you all are doing well and doing, being safe and taking care of each other. But with that, um, got quite a bit done for this week's video, um, and let me just give you a little teaser. So... There, I did get the, the Sherman primary paint done. I still got some more work, but just a teaser there. So with that, um, yes, I'm still working on all three kits. I did primary, most of the work for the week was though on the A10, and you will see that. So with that, guys, if you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button, click on the bell, and every time I upload my video, you will know. And for, you want to leave a comment, or if you want to say anything, just leave it in the comment section. I do usually respond within 12, 24 hours. But, um, sorry about the phone, guys. But, uh, some things, you know, happen. So, if I don't respond right away in that time, I'm sorry. But with that, guys, I'm going to shut up and let's get to the bench. Well, hi, guys. It is Saturday. I know I talked about not doing work on Saturday, but it's snowed outside for the last couple of days. So, no yard work. But, hey, so what I am working on, like I said in the last video, was I'm going to start working on the lighting. And I'm going to show you how to do that on the starboard side wing, but I wanted to show you guys. So I have an SMD, and then I have a 3mm bulb. And I've got it all backtracked and wired. I still got glue some parts down. But let's see if I can get that in there so you can see it. So, yeah. And then I'm going to tape these off so when I paint it, try to make it all look part. Now I didn't poke the three millimeter bulb all the way through because it would have looked wrong. So uh, use your own taste and judgment on that. But what I did want to show you guys is sometimes when you go to light kits, you're going to have to make modifications. And let me show you what I mean by that. Okay. Let me zoom in a little bit here. So you guys can see. Okay, so this is the starboard wing. And as you guys can see, this piece, it folds under and comes right up into there. Now, when you go to run, like on this kit, when you go to run the navigation and the flight lights, you'll notice that, let me see if I can get it here. You notice how this is poked up because the light's too big for it. Not a problem, but it's just too much. So what I did, guys, and let me show you is on this piece I went in and, and did some modification to the bottom of the wing um, and then I cut out the side that I can fix so that there would be as you will see guys that there is now if you look sorry I'm trying to get this camera work figured out as you can tell now it's flush and if it's not very flush it will be when I get it glued but the other thing is, I can fix all this with my putty and get it reshaped and look like nothing ever happened. So, guys, do not be afraid to do modifications as needed for when you go to do lighting on a kit. Because sometimes, you know, lighting makes kits come alive. They make them look great. But sometimes what the, when they mold these things, they're not thinking about, um, like on some kits like Polar Lights 2 and other, um, to me and all that, they, they think about people are going to light it, so they design it that way, but Rebel doesn't. So, the other thing is, I am got to, while I have, yeah, the fuselage is apart, while I have the strobe lights on the bottom, or the, the red beacon lights, I have the holes, and the top is big enough for what I'm going to do, um, the light, when I test fitted it, does not come all the way up to the top like I want it to. So I have to go in here and do some more modification on both pieces. So with that, let me find my stuff. Where did I put that stone? Uh, give me one second, guys. I'll be right Hi, guys. I found it. I'm back. So what I'm using is a soapstone or a very soft abrasive stone to modify or sand down the pieces and I will suggest guys if you don't have one yet get the extension the little hand extension for the Dremel it will make your life so much easier um, 
when having to do any drilling or any Dremel work on a kit, trust me, this thing is awesome. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to work from the outside of the kit. I'm going to work on um, the bottom part here. And I'm going to face the kit like this. And all I'm going to do is just take down enough to, to uh, get what I want to be in there. So doing that, don't have to have your Dremel at high speed like that. About a medium speed, and forget the noise if you can't hear me guys. But when, when shaping out styrene, what you want to do is don't put a lot of pressure in on it. And just let the, the, the tool do what it's supposed to. And make sure you're looking at it. Okay, and you're going to do this quite a bit. You're going to stop, take the piece that you drilled with, clean that back out, take a look at it, and just kind of gauge, do I have to, you, I'm going to have to do more. So, but like I said, don't be in a hurry, guys. You definitely don't want to be in a hurry with this. You want to take your time. Just putting a little bit of pressure to get this to do what I want, not much. Like I said, I'm letting the tool do the work. Take a look at it again. Okay. Now, at this point, when you think you're getting close to getting ready, um, you grab the LED or what you're using. And like I said, I, while I love why Ralph, when you order the lighting kit, gives you everything to do the models you want with. Um, but because I've been building so long, sometimes I know different bulbs work for different parts. And so what you want to do is then after you get it drilled, I'm trying to keep it in camera here, guys. Get, get your LED, how you're going to do it, and bring it up. Take a look at it, see if it's up high enough. And if it is, good, you can stop. If not, you gotta do a little bit more. Sorry if I come out of camera there, guys. I don't mean to. But um, sometimes, so, uh, just a little bit more on that one. And not much. Okay, that should be enough. Get it cleaned out here. And then like I said again, just don't be worried, you know, take your time. Yep, mm, almost. Let me get my glasses. Sometimes with my eyes after my accident, they blur with certain things and certain things they don't. But, nope, just a little bit more. Like I said, just take your time. And then let's go and take a look at that. Yeah. I think I'm going to do a little bit more. Not that high, Buck. And sometimes to make them fit right, you got to modify a little bit bigger than the area you want to be in because of the plastic. Sometimes it doesn't want to give you enough room if you don't make it wide enough. So don't be afraid to go a little bit bigger to make your, your light work. So get that cleaned up and let's take a look again. 
Okay. So, show you right there. That's about, that is about the height I want for this light. Um, it looks natural. It looks the way it's supposed to be even on the plane. It's at the right perspective height. So, good. That's where I'm at. So with that, guys, um, I'm going to finish getting what I need to do for the modifications. And when we come back, I will show you because I'm going to go ahead and modify this. And then I'll show you how to do the lighting because um, last week's video, I said, hey, guys, you know, when you order stuff from Ralph, you know, I said something about resistors. And for the Starship lighting, a lot of his kits, he does have send you with resistors that you have to apply to the LEDs. But for this, um, for this lighting set for the airplanes he, he does the resistors into the circuit board so the great thing is yeah you don't have to worry about even more trying to figure out more spacing because of the resistors you just solder the wire on and go to work and get it all hooked up to to the board but let me get work keep working on this guys and when we come back i'll show you uh show you how i do the wiring so i'll see you in a bit all right guys one thing i forgot to mention um is yes i drill the holes and sometimes i'll use uh, the Dremel and do that, but most time I use what's called a pin vice drill, pin drill. And I've gone and I found bits of all different sizes, because trust me, you're going to need them. And um, to use what I need to do to drill the windows or like I am doing with this markers. So basically, guys, you, once you get it secured in, all you want to do is line it up. To where you want to go and then you can just like i said use one hand to to get it going and and go with it and um be careful be easy put pressure yeah you will have to do pressure but you can do it like this guys so and just again be patient don't try to rush anything yes the vice would be a lot better or the the dremel i could but i still need to keep the bit on there and i don't want to chase bits and play around with parts that I know I'm going to need to do different jobs. So, again, this is a good tool for what I'm doing. And, again, just pressure and twist. And you'll start feeling it dig into the, the model. You'll feel it grabbing and digging through. And there we go. So, basically, you're going to end up with a hole like that. And, um... A good thing to do is always, um, like I said, I will show you how to light the bulbs, but how I wire the bulbs. But if you don't have them wired up yet, but you do have them, you can always use a bulb to test that size. Now, I knew this was going to be, this bit was going to be smaller, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Dremel, or not my Dremel, but my, my knife, and just widen it out. Not by much, just little bits. And kind of force it in a direction like I want it, but get it wound up and take little bits at a time, and then you can do stuff like that. So you'll have to do the inside also, um, just like that, guys. And then we'll come back and we'll test fit it. And there we go. As you guys can see, if I get it, let me try to get there. You go. Put my finger. So there we go. Now the bit was small, but like I said, you can use your X-Acto knife to help widen out that hole by little bits. So, I've already got this one wired up, and um, because I'm working on, like I said, getting the scratch building done, modification, I'm going to go ahead and, um, guys, you want to have a, a glue, no, let me get in frame there, get a glue gun ready, and get it warmed up, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and get it glued in, get it set, so I need to see what else I need to do to this bottom piece to get it all there. But before I do the itty bitty micro SMDs um, for this, and I will show you because that's a little bit more intricate because of the wires. And I will explain that when I do it, but I'll get it all wired up and, and I'll show you when I get this done. Um, when we get ready to do this, because I've already got this done. I won't show you that until I come and do the parts to do, I do the LEDs on the body. I'll show you that, but I will show you how to work with these micro SMDs. Um, the wiring that Ralph already has on them, his people already put on them, and I'll show you a little trick. So I got my solder gun heating up, but first off, I need to get this in and get this dried and set, and then I can work with this. So give me a minute, guys, and I'll see you in a bit. 
Alright guys, before I show you how to wire up one of these SMDs, let me show you how I put them in. And again, forgive me for the camera. Um, so I've already drilled and etched out how big I want the hole for this. And like I said, it's just going to be a micro SMD. And I've already checked to make sure it fits right. Now these things can be very, and like I said, I'm, uh, let me zoom out of this so you can see what I'm doing better. Um, in case I cut the bin that close to the camera, sometimes it's with the camera that close in, sometimes I, I mess up. So, again, I just, there is definitely some technique to doing this, guys. It's just a learn as you go kind of thing, but you'll get that promise. So, um, I do have tweezers that I can, but you want to be careful when you use your tweezers. You don't want to put too much pressure on it because you can snap those little, those little ends quite fast. And basically all you want to do is, let me get it in the camera. So as you can see, and I don't usually use, um, SM or CA glue on a lot of things, but I will just put a dollop when I go to I go to do this and again it just just a little finesse to go with it and there you go that's all I'm using and then I oh yeah then you get that um, so if if it does fall out on you something, I will suggest have a have your have a Q-tip ready. You can wipe up that CA pretty quick, and then start with it again. And like I said, normally I don't use the tweezers because I need to be able to put finger pressure where I'm going. And hopefully there's still enough in there that I can get this to do what I want it to. Just like so. And like I said, I do use, I try to use my finger as much as I can to get it going in there. And it, it's a technique, guys, trust me. It just, sometimes it's just a hurry up and please work, please work. As you can tell, it does not like to stay. I mean, I love these things, but they are pain in the butt to work with. And making sure they stay right where you want them. So I'm going to add a little bit more CA. Just a drop. Kind of got my finger there. And then I come over and I check the light. Make sure it's exactly where I want it. Because sometimes when you do these little SMDs, you can... Um, you think you got it the right place, but then you go and light it on, turn it on and everything, and then it's just not there. So, there. I've got that down where I want it. Um, sometimes I use like the bit I got just to get a little more pressure on it. But a lot of times I don't really like to mess with it after I know it's in. And it's doing its job. Like I said, I do take a look at it, but... Pretty much, these little SMDs are great. And then, with the CA, I just put a little dollop, not very much, just a little dollop of hot, uh, hot glue, and go from there. All right, guys. Um, so basically, what I did is I've gotten um, what I'm gonna use for the ground, which is gonna be black. And I try to always match the wires for how Ralph does his wire design, and sometimes you have to do different. Um, but uh, for this, what you want to do with the, you don't want to, you, you can try to strip this thin thread if you want of, of wire. But another thing that I'll do is I just come in here with my solder and just start burning off the plastic. And sometimes it'll start to unwind on you and you're like, what the hell? Come on now. But I try to, before I even put solder on, I try to get 
as much of the insulation on the small wire as I can off and sometimes it just likes to play with me but here we go and like I said I just take and get it as much as I can melt it with my solder um, so I have a good connection Like I said, sometimes it's, it works very well, and then sometimes it just wants to to play around with me. So, you just got to keep working with it. Keep on it. And if I'm on, I hope I'm on camera. Let me see. So what? There we go. Sorry, guys. So, I like I said, I just keep using my, my, dr my solder iron and start getting it melted get that insulation melted all off and sometimes I have to use a pair of tweezers to help hold the wire there especially on these little ones because it's funny how they, 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 they seem good and tight and then all of a sudden they just they're not so pretty good so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take and I'm just going to get a little bit of the solder that needed and just start getting it on the, the wire it's funny having to I'm kind of looking through this with my micro my magnifiers Just making sure it's all in there. Like that. You want to be careful guys because if you, you keep adding more solder you melt what you already got on there. So. There. Okay. That is that one. And what I do is I don't put a lot of pressure on it. But I just kind of go okay. I just pull okay that's good and all right guys found it and um, you can use a lighter or uh, what you want but I found especially with this thin wire in using my soldering iron it shrinks it just fine this shrink tubing and like I say you don't you don't want to hold on too long you just want to get it there so just like so guys And kind of make sure you hit all the sides, hitting the ends, getting it all shrunk up. Okay, there. Now that's protected. Now I'm going to do the other thing. And the, the weird thing with for the strobes that Ralph did on the board is you're going into a white wire on the board. So, um... And then you're going to be going into red wires and green wires and black wires and all this other thing. So what I did is I went ahead and went, because this is 30 ANG wire. Let me show you. I'll just show you the black roll. But this is what I use. And it's wire wrapping wire. And this is AWG24 uh, forward slash AWG30. This is what I use. I've had, a lot, I've had this for a long time. So um, I'm going to have to get some more here soon on my colored wire. But... Um, I, I, I've barely gone through the black, but so I'm gonna go with orange and that way I can remember it And again, I'm not where worried about trimming it to length right yet until I actually get this thing set But that's about where I want because I know it's gonna come And maybe just a little bit longer Because I know it's gonna come out through the wing and into the fuselage But I want to make sure I have enough room to play with it here on this too. So let me get this one set, and when we come back, I'll show you the next step. Before I do anything else, guys, I and before you do anything else, when you start twisting the wire together or whatever, before you get all that going, one thing you want to do is power the board, hook everything up 
per the instructions, turn it on and see how everything works. So, here we go, guys. Oh, yeah, check that out. And then you can see the strobe, I think. So, everything works. And that's what we're looking for, guys. So, that's basically the best way to wire lighting. Now, if there was resistors, I'd show you that. But the next time we... I do a starship I will show you how to do resistors and what you need to do and think about on that if you haven't followed me with the NX01 follow me on the next starship build and we'll get there but all right guys well now I'm gonna work on getting things twisted up and everything together so I can start doing some putty work then I'll show you that when I get done guys or before I do the putty I'll show you what it looks like when you get it all together because um, you already know I'm doing the modifications to make sure everything fits good so I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, guys, welcome back. So I'm going to go ahead and get the last three LEDs that I need to for the A10 wired up. And I want to show you. Now, a lot of times when you are doing these, if uh, you won't have the resistors, and you're going to need to attach the resistor. And if you order stuff from Ralph, sorry about this, guys. I should have brought these out. Um, Give me one second. These are resistors, and there's sorry, there's different frequent different rates and everything, but I use these. And when you do get the resistors, you're gonna have to solder onto the, the positive. Okay, but with this board, which is really great, is we don't have to add resistors because they're already in the board. So another thing, it depends on which wire you go, but because of the 30 W A and G I bought this a long time ago when I bought the wire when I first really got into lighting this is a Vectec CB 30 millimeter um, twist and let me show you how that works so basically when you get ready to do your, your LED you got two points like this is like if you want to get it twisted on to whatever you're wiring it to but I don't use it a lot um, you do have a wire stripper. Oh, sorry. You do have a wire stripper um, that you can use for these smaller wires like this. And then on the long one, you have one that's got two holes. You got the hole to put the wire to, and then you have a little hole in here to um, insert the, the the post. And what we're gonna do? Um, sometimes it can be kind of fun to find it. So. What you do is you get it on there and you get it to wherever you want and then you just kind of hold it and you twist until it's done. You'll feel it and then something I do is I kind of just scrunch it together and I'll pull that one out of the way and now we'll do it again with the uh, negative wire. So again, just add it to the twist point. And there are different wires out there to use, guys. I'm actually thinking about going to a magnetic wire. And all I have to do is solder it. And that's it. I don't have to, you know, because when you use the soldering iron, you'll burn what little wrapping is off. So, there we go, guys. So, another thing to kind of check when you do this. Um, usually, I don't have the wire twisted up already like this, but... I uh, kind of messed up the other one and then like I said get your your handy hands just like this and make sure your solder is nice and warm nice and hot have your your stuff ready and and then you just kind of you know get some melted and I've had this on for about 15 minutes and it's there we go and then just put some solder on don't try to make it a big block, but just, you know, just a little bit. And watch, you know, don't try to spend too long on it. So. And sometimes this thing doesn't, like, depending on what it is, sometimes the solder... Sometimes I actually have to heat up what I'm going to solder. And 
sometimes it just likes to play around with you. I mean, it's probably getting time for me to get a new tip, too. So, there's always that. Like I said, I just kind of slowly get at it. There. And you can tell it's, it's in place. So that one's done. So again, I've already cut the wire that I'm going to need for the red beacon lights. I've already got it set. Put that up there. Maybe I just need to turn it up a little more. And again, I've got it stripped. Now I'm not going to have two wires <laughs> twisted together. So um, again, just speed it in. And you know you don't have to have it up real high. You can have it down low. You can have it like right here on the on the post. And then I just get things twisted around. Put this back on my little handy hands, and I'll get this one soldered in. Sometimes, you know, I've had this solder so long, it's probably time for me to get new, new solder. I need to get a new tip for this thing. But Sorry, like I said, if I didn't stay in camera, but then I'll add the negative. This all worked out well. Okay, and that one's done. So, okay, and you do want to try to make sure you keep them separate, but I know the colors, so the purple is going to be my tail strobe, and then these are my beacon lights. So, here's the last one again. Get one out, and we'll do it one more time. And then like I showed in the others, I will be putting on um, some insulation to one of these, one of the posts. So when I do get it into the kit, um, sometimes when we work it, they're going to touch each other. And if you touch them post to post, it's just going to short out. So again, just twist. Pull down a little bit. And go and solder.
Okay. There's that. And yes, I did get some on the negative post, but that's good because it'll make doing this a lot easier. And strip, feed, and twist. Okay. So, just like so. Sure. And like I said, you usually want to try to get most of your wire out of the way um, once you got the length of it. So, there we go. Now I'm going to add the insulation and we're good going to add the, the shrink tubing and call it good and then I'll test them before I actually hook them up and awesome so I'll come back when I'm ready to turn them on and there we go guys so the wiring's good everything's working all my lights are now working um, so the next part for me is to get it put into the kit and uh, keep going so when I get these done in there's one part I want to talk about because on doing lighting on halves it's a little different but I'll talk about that when I get ready to do it so happy Monday guys and did a little work yesterday and just gonna show you um, a lot of the little bit here is just stuff that I can't really show on camera without me covering with the big old hands but got the inside of the cockpit done um, still got to put it together, but yes, these are decals, and a lot of times I don't like to use them, but um, these did turn out really, really well. So there's that. And the instrument panel. Let me see if I can get back in there for you guys. So it turned out really nice. Sorry that that's not focusing. There we go. It turned out really nice. Really happy with that. And then. Um, I've been working on getting better with my smaller detail painting, so I'm happy with that. And then I did, you know, the engines. Um, got the parts that I got to put put the engine, two engines together with, um, done. So I'm gonna get that, and then I got to do some putty work on that before I actually put it on. Um, and I was gonna try to show you guys how to how I put in the lights, but. With what was going on, what I had to do, it was a little harder. Um, so I'm just going to tell you, always I use hot glue. Um, and I'm a very big uh, user of it. I love it. It works well. It does this great job. Now, if you try to use like CA glue or super or, you know, super glue and stuff, you do run into the, the thing that this stuff will, in time, if you try to use the, those glues, will run down while you're waiting for it to set so um, now on Starship models it's easy to do the small LEDs because you're always on a flat surface you're not having to try to make two halves like I am on this plane but um, just again get your hot glue set line your light up go ahead and get enough to to help hopefully hold the bottom let it get cured let it dry it takes about two three minutes and then um, put on more hot glue to secure it and as that starts to cool you can press in and make sure your light um, let's get back here is exactly where you want and this is so those are done so the next part of this is I actually got to get these two two lines tied together um, well actually three because I'm gonna tie all the negative lines together these two go to one wire and this goes to another wire on the board and probably where I'm going to put my board is right here. Um, I think I'm going to actually... Um, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to... I want to put the post here. And I'll probably be putting this together and, and do, drilling it and then securing it with the epoxy before I put it together. Um, at least the post. But I'm trying to think I'm going to put my computer board right here. Um, 
and then just be able to run everything from the wings through all the way right down there and I'm playing with an idea on how I want to do this to so that the customer can transport it easily when they give it to the person they are and um, I'm just waiting on some things to come in and I'm going to try some ideas and when I if I get those to work out I will explain what I did but with that I'm going to get the cockpit together and uh, do some more putty work I have started sorry I did start the putty on the seam, the seams of the wing some and then as you can see I'm definitely going to have to do a bit of sanding here to get that back to that nice contour but that's okay and I will show you guys how I do putty um, how to do putty on seam lines on the fuselage where it's a little bit bigger and easier to work with so with that guys I'm going to get this put together and uh, I'll see you in a bit well happy Tuesday guys and welcome back and continuing work on the A10 but to let you know I've gotten most of the stuff primed on the half track and the Sherman but I haven't done the soldiers yet because I want to show you the trick that I use to help keep them in the area so they can get them painted and primed right um, at least get primed right because the rest of everything is pretty much done by hand with those little buggers but as you guys can see um, I have started work on getting a lot of the I'm gonna have to put in the uh, putty to get these seam lines worked out around the tail and one of the additions there but I also did another modification on this and now I know it looks bad right now, but I'm going to get that sanded down and get that puttied up and let you know. But yeah, let me show you what Rebel decided to do instead of letting the air brake be in the... Um, instead of keeping it in the fixed position, I put it in the, you know, basically the wing position so the plane could do its job. So as you can see here, they only molded it in this upright position. Um, open like this and while it is really cool it looks awesome not what um, the consumer or my my uh, um, uh, person wanted for me to do this build on um, that was you know other than lighting it they asked that I make sure um, that this thing looked like it was in flight and yes it's an air brake and it can still fly with it but they wanted more of the wing look. So all I did was I cut the piece down, I cut, um, I made sure each fit and then I cut the sections off. I used the bar that was inside to keep this open and help keep these apart and um, then I just sanded down and then glued them into position. Um, so you can do modifications, just study how you want to do it and there you go and then you're gonna to have to do some work because if you look at the reference photos even when this is open the 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 air brake flaps are start hinged here where the actual hinges are molded into the kit and not back here this whole wing opens this whole flap opens up so um, I'm gonna sand this down before I putty it make sure it's really good and smooth and then putty it and then take care of all that work I did um, then the next thing is I also added the lower landing pod. Um, yes, I'm going to have this closed up because like I said, it's in flight. I'm definitely going to be putting the wheel and the gear in. Um, but one of the things I want to do is get the puttying all done here because I am going to actually, because um, I still have to putty the wings to the plane itself, to the body of the plane. And I'm going to have to do all that. And it's a little easier to do with it being in a section. Um, getting it all sanded down, getting it smooth before I actually put it together. And yes, um, I did do the engines. Oops, sorry guys. I did do the engines. And um, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add putty to the seam line and get these all sanded down and ready to go. And I will, and this is how usually the best way to do a seam line is. Now you can do it if you want just to rub it down, but I found taping it and giving a little bit of an edge to where you're going to seam is going to reduce your sanding by a lot. And I learned that by watching a video. So hopefully, you know, you guys, like I said, you can do however you want, but this is going to help save a lot of sanding time. Trust me. Um, 
So now I'm going to get these putted up and let them get drying and I will show you what I do with small figures like I'm doing on the uh, World War II Arden Forest build. Um, and the easy way to do that. So give me a second to get that set up guys or actually let me get this um, puttied up so it can start to dry and uh, I'll be back and show you how I, I paint those. Alright, see you guys in a bit. I didn't get the putty started yet, but because I wanted to show you this, guys. So back to the World War II build. Um, when I do small pieces like ammo cans, weapons that aren't on the sprue, stuff like that, um, one thing I like to do is I'll take my tape, I'll tear off a decent sized piece, and then I'll tear off another little sized piece. And what I like to do is I'll turn it over and I'll tape one side down and leave the sticky side up and then um, I'll tape the other side down. Now what this is going to do for you guys is it's going to allow you to stick that part down and it not blow everywhere when you go and try to paint it with the airbrush or a rattle can whatever. Um, sometimes with the smaller parts you want it in like figures or weapons or ammo cans or kind of whatever um, if you want to go ahead and get them off the sprue and get them cleaned up then this is what I do so with this um, this is also a turntable um, it does that funky you know it gets to spin sorry guys tapes being weird and what I like to do is so I don't touch a lot of my pieces, I even use this for the bigger pieces. So, what I like to do is be able to turn it just like that. Now, these things you can pick up pretty much anywhere. Walmart, um, probably Hobby Lobby when it reopens. Um, but, um, you can definitely find them on Amazon. But, just, uh, this is basically, it, it's a computer turntable. Uh, a monitor turntable. Um, you can do it with cake turntables that people use to decorate cakes, whatever. But this is an awesome piece of equipment. So, like you guys remember, I had pieces taped up. Um, because I have to get some of the painting done before I get to actually put the rest of their, their body together. Like this guy. So with him, I'm going to do this. Or actually, sorry. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to stick his arms down too. Now yes when you go you'll paint over a bunch of the sticky part of the tape but where the part is stuck right now it's going to stay sticky. So let's get another one here and like I said guys like with the parts that I gotta work together on um, I'm gonna just do two here because I gotta do these arms and this arm um, and that way I don't get everything lost. Um, that guy's a screw. I can just paint him that way. But then you go like the characters that you already got done. You can do that. And that. And that. Um, I know it looks weird, but trust me, this is going to work out, guys. So... Um, I'm gonna get these primed and I'll show you uh, what it, how well it looks when we get when I get back. All right, be back in a bit, guys. Okay, guys, here we go. Um, got them pretty well primed, and as you can see, where you lay them, it kind of stays sticky. And don't you know, it's good because I'm also gonna be using black to highlight shadows. So don't worry about some of the primer you don't see. But what the primer does help me do is there's some things I need to go fix, like right here on the coat, and that's it. I mean, that's fine, but I need to fix that, and I'm looking at the joints, making sure they're good. Again, same thing, I need to clear this, take care of this seam line, take care of a couple of seam lines on the coat, and then what I'll do is, that's why I didn't really make sure they were really good in primer, because I want to look and see what I need to finish taking down and make them smooth. So. Again, like I said, I gotta take care of right here. I gotta do some some work on the seam line on the arms, and then maybe just a little bit on the waist there. But 
But like I said, what primer does, it helps you because as you can see, you can see where the molding line is right here. I need to take that down. And then right here, I got to take that down and then do some seam work on the shoulders. And that's the good thing about primer. That, I mean, um, if I really coated these good with primer, then I wouldn't be able to see those. Uh, or, you know, I would still be able to see them, but then I'd be wasting a lot of stuff when I go to sand and get rid of things. So I do a light, light coating with the primer just to highlight things that I need to deal with. Like I said, you can see in the seam lines and then um, on the arms and the back and the legs. So, but again, I love to me a primer and I'm going to have to order more online because um, between the A10, that German half track and the Sherman tank, I'm about out of primer. And like I said, Hobby Lobby's closed and my hobby store uh, hasn't, doesn't have any more. So I'm going to have to get some online. Um, but yeah, so there you go guys and on the other side while those were drying I got fixing be careful when you do that too I got fixing the wings like I showed you now I got them taped off and I'm gonna putty and then I'll re re etch the lines on the flaps and I've gotten the nose on the, the landing gear done around the landing bay and then I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna use some some liquid putty to get in there so um, and get it smoothed in there and get it done real nice with the liquid putty but I need to do do these get those done get everything that I've already shown you guys done and then um, basically you let it dry then you peel the tape and then you go to sanding so once I get everything or puttied and dried I will take the tape off and show you what it looks like guys so I'll see you in a bit all right guys so this is what it looks like when you get the putty on um, and like I said, that's why I, do, I mask off the areas because it looks like a lot, but really when I take the mask off, you guys will see it's not. But um, go ahead and let it dry for probably start with about, you know, let it get start to get dry. Then you could take the tape off. Um, and I'll show you that, guys, here in a bit. So there we go. Getting closer on some of these. And I got a mail call today, so I'll be happy to share that with you, too. All right, see you guys in a bit. Welcome back. It is Thursday morning, and I took Wednesday off. Um, make sure to give everything a, a decent chance to dry. As you can tell, I've already gotten the masking off. Um, but yes, I took yesterday off and did some things with the family. But just to show you guys, when you do line it, you get this nice, it's a little over the seam, but it's good, and then we can fix the details. But yeah, instead of having a big, big area to try to sand and clean up, all you got is this little area. And there you go. Um, this looks a little bigger because I had that bigger spot to cover up. But got it down. Got it done on both sides. And then I will take care of the line and take up whatever little else I got to do. But hey, even better. Um, on these, yeah, sometimes you get a little mess. But you can clean that up really easy. But as you can tell, and this still will be nice and easy to take care of. So guys, um... One of the things, I, I like sanding sticks. I have sanding paper, as you guys have known. Um, but when doing small areas and trying to not lose too much detail, I go with sanding sticks. And I bought these at Hobby Lobby. And I went to go get some more. And Hobby Lobby has officially closed down until Corona has, the coronavirus has done it. But the black ones are the... Uh, lighter grit or the more grit however you want to say it but you got a light dark grit and a heavy dark grit then the next one I get is the blue which is a lot lighter um, helps clean up stuff but you do same thing you got the heavy and you got the light and then for the finishing sanding on details I use the white one which is the, the lightest sanding stick you can get so what I like to do usually and I'll just do a quick demonstration here let me find a piece here let's go with this one is I usually like to start out and I usually don't go with the heavy grit I usually try to use the lightest grit and basically I'll just sand and start knocking it down because I don't want to lose too, too much detail I mean you are going to lose detail but um, you can you can incorporate most of that back very easily and then like I said um, Yes, I will wipe all these down after the sanding is done, and you will learn that too. But you go ahead and just start taking it down. And again, 
as you see me do in other videos, just go lightly. Let the sand paper do its work. Let the sanding stick do its job. And um, just slowly go with it. And as you can tell, it's starting to come down. So next thing I might go to is, like I said, my lighter sander. And basically, again, and all I'm trying to do is um, get a lot of that. I want to leave the line where I covered up, where I know what I, what I puttied. And then take off the rest that I need to, but get everything sanded down flat and smooth, or almost smooth, with it being the wing is going to have that angle. But, yeah. So. And that's basically it, guys. Um, I'll keep working on this. But once you get it to a point that you really do like, and you want to try to take off some more of the detail, you go to the lightest. And not you're not trying to take off detail, but you're trying to smooth what you sanded, and that's what this white one does. Is it really smooths out the abrasions you made onto the kit and the putty. And again, just slightly sand. And as you can tell, stuff keeps moving. So this is where the holes that I had when I redid this swing are, and that's what I gotta fix. So I'm going to keep working on this, guys, and when I get it all done, I will come back and show you. But remember, always start out with the heaviest grit. Then once you get to a point you like and you feel confident, go to your next lightest grit. And when you're done with that one and you really are happy with what's going on, do your lightest grit and help smooth it back out. And that's all there is. And then we'll definitely we'll take a damp rag and clean this off, and I'll show you guys that in a minute. But... Let me get back to it, and I'll see you guys when I get this done. All right, welcome back, and I've got everything at well, least sanded down till after I prime. Which, um, when you like I said, if you've watched my other videos, you know you sand where you can, and then you go ahead and prime where you've done the putty and the sanding to see what else needs to be done. But um, so I can do this one, and I've already got everything masked off, taped off that I want to save, and then you know there is going to be some things that aren't going to happen but I'm going to go ahead and get this primed so I can see what else needs to be sanded or if I need to touch up any putty but that's good and with these two pieces I'm going to actually wait till I can primer the whole thing um, to make sure because I don't want to do too much primer and keep it building up and then lose some of the detail on that so but I have got everything sanded and ready to go I've already used um, it's called micro mask um, there you go, but I've used this to help protect the lights on not only the fuselage but on the wings. I've done some masks, sorry about the phone guys, but I've already done them on here. So I can go ahead and get the, I'm going to get the wings primed at least once, sorry about the phone, so I can check and see what I need to do before I actually attach it to the two pieces of fuselage and then do the, the putty work right there. So. After you've done a lot of the sanding, you're going to find you still have a lot of dust um, from everything. So one of the things you want to do, get a damp cloth and then just lightly wipe it down to get all that dust off. And just like so. And then um, you take a dry paper towel or another dry cloth and then just again just lightly wipe down so you can get that that dust out of there and then you can kind of see if you need to do anything else before you primer it or not um, but like I said I'm gonna go ahead and do this one for you guys and then I'm gonna get cleaning and I'll go ahead and take care of the fuselage ones while I can um, at least get it wiped down and cleaned off so I can see what else needs to be done and I've already done the liquid mask on this and the good thing is you can use the damp cloth to try to get what you couldn't get wiped off so you don't have to sand and take care of that so again just do the whole thing get her wiped down wherever you did the putty like I said guys wipe off the whole piece again and dry it down Okay, 
And next thing we'll do is we'll get this primed up and ready to look and see where we need to be at for the next part. If it's where I can, if I do need to do some touch-ups, um, if I can, I'm going to go ahead and try. If it's not nothing major, I'm going to go ahead and try to get these attached to the fuselage, get them, get the wires run through, get it set, get it good and set and glued, and then um, start putting the wings on the fuselage. And then, like I said, if I need to do anything out here, I can do that because I can set it over and that way. But I want to get some more done, or at least try to get more together. So when I get to that next point of wanting to get the two pieces put together, I can. And then do some more work. But basically, yeah, guys, that's basically it. Once you've done your initial sanding, if it's pretty major, like you see some of the work I've had to do, like I said, again, just take cloth and go through and wipe down the kit. And that'll get all the dust off. You won't be painting the dust in. And like so. Like I said, on these parts, I can just let them air dry because I'm not going to prime them yet until I get everything else done. But I do want to get the dust off. I want to get it cleaned up so I can really kind of see what I've got to work, what I need left to do. Maybe I can see with the naked eye and without primering or everything and then just go from there. But there we go, guys. So... When we come back, I will hopefully have these parts primed up and I can kind of show you what I mean by why you need to get the sanding done and then do your primer and then look and see if you need to fix anything. Um, I know I've explained that on other videos, like I said, guys, but um, never hurts to go over it again. So um, I'll see you when I get back. All right, welcome back, guys. And let me show you what, we're, what I'm looking at when I do this. So let me bring this up here for you. And hopefully it'll focus up so you can see it. Let me put my hand under it. So this is where I did the putty work when I modified this. So as you can tell, the primer shows me I need to get some more done. Um, fill up a little bit and sand it down a little bit more. But also you can look here. Right here I need to do a little more sanding. And I need to do some more sanding on this, this. And that looks good. And then underneath looks okay, but I need to... Do a little bit more right here too, and along this edge. So that's what primer helps you get helps you get figured out. And then on this one, I need to actually fill this up with putty, get it uniformed. Do a little bit more here to bring this out even. But other than that, you know, this seems to good. I got to do some sanding, but as you can see, the primer helps you show the stuff you need to finish on what little bit more to work on. So. Again, I got to do the same down here. I need to sand down on this a little bit more and then fill this in up with a little bit of putty and work on this section here. Um, and that's the great thing about being able to do, you know, when you do primer, you can see the things that you still need to work on. Um, got to do a little bit more sand here. Sorry about that, guys. A little bit more sanding. It's not bad, but I can still see it. And I don't know if you guys can. You can definitely tell there's a little bit of work needs to be done and um but other than that i mean you can definitely see it right sorry about the phone you can definitely see it right here so i need to do a little bit more sanding and then that'll be good um with that i wanted to get some more sanding sticks to help do with this but hobby lobby's closed and all that so i actually have done an order because i'm out of primer now too um i've done an order to get sanding sticks and primer um, to refill what I've used. So we're going to keep working on this and I'm going to take care of these little defects that I've showed you that I need to tweak up and work on and we'll go there. But I think I'm going to take a little bit of a break on the A10, just kind of step away and come back to it in, in a day or so just to let it. Um, I've been working on this pretty good since Monday, except yesterday, like I said, I took the day off. but been working on it pretty hard you know pretty steady so I want to take a break from it for a couple of days and come back to it with the fresh set of eyes so um, stay tuned there's gonna be fun painting coming in store alright guys welcome back and yes there's the compressor so 
the first thing I always do with any of my kits, and pretty much I'm, I, I started it and I never stopped it, is I pre-shade. Um, so one of the first things I'm going to do, because I'm going to make these tracks try to look this great, and a lot of the videos I've watched on them, they never even primed them. They just started painting right on them. So I like using primer because it helps the paint go a lot better. But um, I'm going get to get the tracks back to a black. And like I said, you don't have to go crazy. You don't want to go too crazy on what you're doing. Um, but we definitely want to make sure they're getting back to that nice black color. And just, just, just getting a little bit back on there, so it's not crazy, but yeah, so like I said, I'm just getting the tracks back to looking like tracks, so uh, that's what I'm going to do, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you pre how I do a lot of pre shading before I just go into this painting. So when you're looking at your kit, you're going to be looking for lines like on planes or starships or stuff. Or like with this, you also want to look where there's the where different things are. What can create shadows? What's going to help give depth to your model? So like with this, the first thing I'm going to do is get the grills and get the the the, the welded lines in, and then I'll shade everything else, pre-shade everything else. But if you've never pre-shaded and you know you need you want to practice. Um, I'll show you here. So, you want to have just like a little thin line. If you want to work on lines, you can take a piece of scratch paper and, and play with them. But, you know, and the one thing about pre-shading, you don't have to get really crazy with it. As you can see, I'm not, you don't have to be almost 100%, you know, like, oh my god, why didn't I get it right in line? Because you just, you just, trying to enhance things but like um, so don't worry if you're you're not perfectly straight or it's too heavy or oh my god what did I do so okay like right there I want to make sure everything in here gets a nice good shading it's a recess just like that guys and now um, again I'm just gonna and I like to start off to get um, because if you ever airbrush before, you know, paint likes to collect at, at the beginning. Because um, it just likes to do what it wants to do. So now I'm just going to lightly get those painted in so there's a little bit of shading. And then just do some of the more detail work. And then, um, as you guys can see. So. But all this is going to do is add to your build. This is going to help make it even more. So. Um, don't fret if it's not like a hundred percent, like I said, straight or in line. It's never going to be, guys. Um, and besides, if you get it a little too heavy, that's what you know the, the primary paint for. And then, like, if you got fly sights, one thing I want to do to help create shading is I just slightly mist it with black, and then I'll go on to the next stage. Like I said, just like that, and then I'll bring this side up, and same thing, I'm going to get those edges, those lines done, but I'm going to brush a little bit like that, and then make sure, and then on the back, I'm going to do some of that and definitely get in there and get that done. So I you know, just lightly paint. So there you go guys. That's basically pre-shading. And now when I go to do the primary paint, and I'll explain the steps I do with that. If you have never seen my video on what I do when I do pre-shading and primary paint, stay tuned. If you have, you know you can skip ahead guys. So um so like if you have a more intricate piece like a starship bridge or like top of this tank, which has a lot of detail, um, again you're just gonna I'm just gonna highlight things like that, like that. I'm just highlighting things. I want to highlight a 
want to highlight some things. And then look in here, look down on the gun. But like if you get surfaces like this where you can tell it's a, it's, what to me it really did is made it look like, you know, this was forged or hammered and, and done, done with a, a big press. So again, um, I will just lightly darken it up just to bring a little bit of shadow to it. And like where I got this, I'll do that, but then I'll just lightly shadow and go from there. Might darken up where it's like there and right there, but for most of it, and then I'll just lightly shade again. But yeah, that's basically it, guys. And then for like you got a bottom like this, this one was actually kind of easy. Um, I don't mind getting a little more darker on this because it's going to be covered with a lot of grime and stuff. So. And then just play with it. Just do what makes you comfortable, guys. Do where you feel you want to do and how you want to do it. But, again, sometimes you got to spray that thing off. Back of the tank, like I said, I'll do a little, a little heavier on the details on the back to bring them out. But just like that, guys. So there is pretty much the three parts to the tank body done. So I'm gonna get back to the tracks and appreciating everything else, and then I'll uh, show you how I do the primary paint. So I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, welcome back, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on the primary paint. And I've got my brush loaded up and this is a, a process and if you've watched my videos before you'll know but um, thing about when you're doing paint airbrush paint hold on um, don't try to be in a hurry with it don't try to get it all coated in just one shot and then you kind of lose a lot of things sorry guys something just Oh, this thing, this thing's acting weird. It's a piece to the back, and okay, I was gonna start with this piece, but I'm gonna let it. Hold on, I gotta get it situated again, and uh, then we'll come back to it after it dries. So, okay, and I'm pretty sure I, I know I put enough glue on it. Hold on a second, guys. Sorry. It's a problem with CA. Sometimes you can get it, and sometimes it's just a pain in the behind. Okay, there we go. So we're going to let that secure and dry, so I'll start with the next big piece. When you do airbrushing, you kind of want to... I like to go... The tank's either going to go this way, this way, or it's going to go... But it's always going to go on an angle. So... So here we go. So basically... Your first pass, you kind of coat, get a get it started, but it's not. And then yes, you will drop paint. Trust me. Sorry about that, guys. But I'm not trying to coat it all at once either. I'm just just getting the first coat down and getting it started, just like so. And sometimes, yeah, you might not be able to stay the angle with it because there's just a lot to it, so. But, you know, like I said, just lightly put it on and go with it, just like so. So that's the first coat for this piece. And then we'll start again. Because this is turret, I don't want to, I just want to get it started, like I said. I'm not trying to get everything done at once. Bottom of the turf. Yeah. 
bottom of the tank. Oops. The turret. Okay, now there we go. Okay, so that one's done. And the same thing, guys. Again, just... Don't, like I said, don't try to get it all in one pass. Don't try to go, oh my god, that blast is standing up, but it's okay. It, it's going to look good. But, yeah, so... I'm not painting the front of them yet, but or the inside of them. I just want to get the back side because when I do put this on, because um, I'm going to have to paint those again, and I'm going to have to paint more on the side of these when I put those on to get a nice even paint job. Um, like I said, that's all I want to do is just get a little bit on there. Um, I've already painted these guys, and with that, because I've already got enough of a pre pre shade done. And I can work that airbrush. I'm going to go ahead and put that on. And then I can just touch up around there with the airbrush. But I wanted to make sure I got the backs good. Um, and the great thing, he's like, you just painted that book. It's okay, guys. The great thing about it to me is it dries pretty quick. I mean, yeah, I got paint on my fingers. But it's okay because I was grabbing inside. And now the same thing again. We're going to. Go ahead and get this on and get this side on and that way we can take care of a lot of the other paint so kind of like this right now I'm going to be able to paint the inside of those and the outside just like I said lightly And then like I said, but the reason I did, I started like that so I could get behind it because this gets really up close to the kit. So I wanted to make sure those are out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to wait a few, to like maybe one or two minutes, have a beer, have a little bit of your beer. And while we're doing that, the next coat I'm going to do, I'm going to even thin it down even more. And... Um, what this does, it helps it helps it blend, but it helps it not go on really, 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 really thick. Because like I said, you're not trying to cover it all in one pass. This, like I said, most times when I do this pre-shading and then I start the primary paint, two to three, sometimes four passes. But just give it a second. Doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to get completely, completely dry. Just, just to that point. So this is already good and done. And like I said, I just, I just, I always test it and then I hold the brush a little bit more away and then I go in and just start doing a little bit more paint. Again, like I said, I'm not trying to cover it and just with that too guys, this is a top fill. This is not one of those lovely ones I can put a cap on, but the thinner you make the paint, it's going to spill. Just so you know. So again, we just just go over it like so. Like I said, you don't have to go crazy with it. Um, not yet, because just stand back, just coat what you can. And just let it go where it needs to. Just like so. Then we'll go over the top. Like I said, you guys can see I'm I'm getting further and further away from the model on some of this. And then like I said, where you got those weird points. If you're not getting paint on this side, it's alright, because when you turn it around, you will. There you go. And then, so, get 
some more paint. So now we're going to turn it around and go on this side. And then, like I said, I'll get those parts that you go, oh my god, I didn't get paint there. And then just slowly get in there. Then, like I said, if you see some things, you can, you can turn it just a little bit. And if sometimes you're like, well, I didn't get the paint, don't worry, because when you go to weather this thing, it'll cover up a lot of what you missed. So. We're going to start the bottom this time. Get around the side of that barrel. Right there. And on the side of this thing. Okay. And do this. Make sure that gets all good. And this side. Make sure. And then we'll just set it down. Like I said, I try not to touch it very much, but the great thing about to me and the airbrush is just you go. So now I'll start on this side. Like I said, I'll just slowly go over and get more paint on there. And like I said, because of the way it is, um, I'll turn it like so. Not very, very minimal turn. And then I'll get the sides that I didn't catch when I was painting the other side and just do it like this. Okay. And then, yeah, i got to get the inside of the barrel. Okay. So, now we'll back that up and let that go. And we'll go to this guy. So I'm going to go ahead and start the front this time. This way and like I said you know because I can fit my fingers in here well I'll just pick it up Because the paint's a little thinner, I'm gonna show you another technique I do with it, guys. When it gets this, when it starts thinning down, especially for stuff like that and the underneath, I will show you a technique I use for it. But make sure you get this all good and done. Okay, and again, now I'm gonna pick up, keep my fingers underneath of the pieces that's not gonna get paint. And then I'll do the back. And now, with because the paint's getting lighter, uh, like I said, I'm not going to do much with it. Um, touch things that I can actually touch and get the bottom done. And you're like, oh my gosh. So, and then, yeah. Like I said, you get these little trap points that you got to kind of turn this around. Like so. Good. Now, we're going to let it dry a little bit, a little bit more. And then we'll do another coat. And then from there, I'll decide what it's like. So, again, on the third coat, I will thin this down even more. And we'll go ahead and mix it. Okay, it's a pretty good mix. And yep. Okay. So now we're going to let that dry for a couple of minutes and then we'll go back at it again. I got to look at these. I didn't get these insides painted. I thought I did and I didn't. So make sure I get those fixed up. Yeah, it's just 
kind of a patient wait, and I know I got to still do these. I'm sorry, guys. I got to do these, um, and I'm not. I'm gonna paint them while they're here before I actually put them into the kit because I want to do a little bit of dry brushing where they go. Just, I mean, you might. You build these things, you might never see that detail, but I'm kind of one of those guys. I like to get things done. So, all right. Well, this piece is dry enough on the wheels I can touch. Let's go to this one. Okay. And again, because um, I forgot those, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I get those touched up on both sides. But now, again, I'm just going to... I'm going to actually hold it even further back to make sure I'm getting it. Because the thinner it is, the more you can go. So. And then like I said, And you can see as it gets thinner, it even coats more. But you want to be careful because you can actually put too much on. So. Sometimes, so. again and this time like I said I'm really kind of holding it up because when you do this next coat like I'm doing this is a third coat well hey guys welcome back and yes I know it is Saturday and I didn't get finished what I wanted to um, but I'm going to end it here for the week, show you what I what I did get done, what you guys saw. So, this is what, um, it's still not glued together, but this is what it looks like um, ready to go. And let me just do that. So, I'm happy with the paint job, I'm happy with the pre-shading, I like where everything's going, and then there's going to be several other things I'm going to do to this, but um, right there I'm, I'm very happy with that. So with that guys, I want to wish you all... A happy Easter. Have an awesome rest of your weekend. Have an awesome week. And uh, I'll see you next time on the bench.